over the top of the speaker, so I apologize. <laughs> but um, I'd just like to kind of follow on from what Charlene was sharing. Um, God wants us to, to have a passion in our hearts and lives for Him. First of all, to know Him and for His presence. There's nothing like a relationship with God, and there's just nothing like knowing the presence of God in your life. It's such an anchor in difficult times, and it's such a, a joy to know the Lord and to have the joy of the Lord as your strength. How many of you know we go through pretty hard times, and we need strength that comes from God? Well, that comes from His presence and being in His presence. and. So I'd like to share a little bit today, uh, following on from what Charlene was sharing and uh, kind of gauging where we're at. Acts chapter 2, and I'd like to read beginning with verse 37. Now when they heard this, this was Peter's sermon on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell as fire and, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent or change your life, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and your children, for all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. With many other words he solemnly testified, kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then those who had received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. I mean, just really consider that. 3,000 people became members of that church on that day. Ted, what would that do to the hospitality ministry the next week? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you think about this. Wow, 3,000 people suddenly are, are added. And they're, they're because, you see, the reason that it happened is the fire fell. I, I don't have time in this sermon to go back into the early part of Acts chapter 2, but God's presence came as fire, and amazing things started to happen. The Holy Spirit fell upon them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it showed. And these people gave their lives to the Lord. They had a fire and a passion. They're like, what shall we do? You know, if your question to the Lord is, Lord, what's the minimum I can do? Then you know you need some more fire. Or if your question is, Lord, don't ask me to do anything. You know, ask someone else. Uh, you know you need some more fire. But if you got such a relationship with God in your life that you're like, Lord, what can we do? How can we share the life-changing presence of God and victory of Jesus? How can we further that? Show me what to do. But of course, if he shows you what to do, like Charlene was saying, it's going to require something of you. But there's such a beauty in following him. I, re I remember one time when we were ministering in England and we had started our second church. This is our third church that we've planted. We planted a church in Scotland, a church in England, and we planted this one 30 years ago. Can you believe that? Thir How did that even happen 30 years ago? I can't even believe that. But in our second church, I had these evangelistic newsletters, and across the top it said, Jesus saves. And we lived in an apartment complex. And I woke up one morning, and it was just, it just hit me. Go put these in all the mailboxes, or mail slots, because they were through the doors, in all the apartments around you. And I was like, Lord, I have my quiet time now. I mean, you know, th this isn't the time I do things like that. And it just hit me, just go. So I thought, okay. So I got this, you know, Sam, kind of like a letter carrier thing there, and I got all these newspapers in there, and I went to literally every door and shoved these things through. They landed on the floor in the apartments, and about three weeks later, 
a young Muslim woman named Tamara came to our church. And she held this newsletter in her hand. And she said, are you the one who put this through my door? And I said, yes. She was probably, what, 19, 20 years old? She said to me, when this came through my door, I had a razor blade at my wrist. And I had just said, God, if you are real, you've got to show me right now or I am in so much pain, I will end my life. Right onto the floor, boom, she was a Muslim. Jesus saves. She said, I read the entire newspaper and I prayed that prayer to give my life to Jesus, and I'm here now. See, th these are things that, you know, and I thought, I didn't even want to do that. You know, I, I didn't want to interrupt my schedule, my priorities, but that little whisper from the Lord just ignited something of fire in my life. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to... Take an action. And I didn't know what to expect, you know. I did that in the college dorms when I was in college. I put tracks under all the doors around about me, Christian tracks. And the next day, a lineman from the college football team came to my door with the track in his hand. Boom, 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 boom. I opened the door. Did you put this under my door? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I didn't know what to think. He was a big guy. He said, I read this whole thing. It was like four spiritual laws, something like that. He said, I got down on my knees and I couldn't get off of my knees until I had asked God to forgive me of every sin I could remember committing in my entire life and I feel like a new person. I said, Lord. You see, those, those, when, when you got some fire, you want to spread it. And isn't that something about fire? It spreads. If you give it fuel, if you give it reason, and this is nothing like I prepared. I can't believe I'm even talking about it. <laughs> why do I even prepare? I mean, goodness me. No, that's not true. I know exactly why I prepare because I need to. <laughs> but they had this fire. See, the, the problem is we tend to lose the fire, like Charlene was saying. You know, we can become lukewarm without even realizing we've become lukewarm because we're still doing some of the right things. We're still, you know, maybe we're not out there doing horrible things and we're, we're just trying at some level to be pleasing to the Lord. But we lose the fire sometimes. God wants us to live with fire. You know, if we really just could understand how profound what Jesus did for us is, you know, we'd live more like it was what it really is because it is what it really is. So they had this fire. They wanted to share this fire. And People who heard them speak and when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they said, what should we do? And the answer was, repent. Evaluate your life and change the way that you're living. Stop doing things you shouldn't be doing and start doing things that you should be doing. And most of all, enjoy a relationship with Jesus. It's not all about just pleasing him. It's about living with him. It's about having him in our life. At our men's breakfast yesterday, or brunch, sorry, one of the men who was there talked about Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And it was profound. He had walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And why wasn't he afraid? And how did he come through on the other side? God was with him. 
And I just want to tell you, if there's any thing in my life that, that I stand 100% on, and um, there are other things too, but it's his presence with me. And through all the hard things, through our daughter being practically dead for two months with COVID, and just uh, all the problems that followed that. You know, we've walked through the valley of the shadow, and some of you have walked through the valley of the shadow. Some of you are walking through the valley of the shadow right now. But I want to tell you the reason we weren't afraid. We were concerned, but we were not afraid because he is with us, and he's got his hand upon our daughter, and he's got his hand upon us. You know, you can't buy that. The world doesn't know that. They don't know what to do when they're walking through the valley of the shadow. But he's with us. And we've got to have that fire in his presence. And that fire comes from opening our lives to him. You know, when fire fell in the Bible, fire fell from heaven, when there was an altar, and that altar just represents a place of, of a new surrender to him. And when I get overwhelmed with the challenges of pastoring through COVID or the challenges of, of you know, health in our family or whatever challenges may come our way, when I get overwhelmed, I know exactly what to do. Lord, I'm not alone. You're here. And I rely upon you. And I may not know where this is going, but you already have it in your hands. And you've promised you'll never leave me or forsake me. And I start to get joy. Lord, you're here. It doesn't look good, but you're here. And you know exactly. See, you, you, this fire starts to grow. So you want to, uh, what you don't want to do is, is accept the devil's asbestos in your life. Whoever invented asbestos tiles ought to be hung. <laughs> but the devil has his own asbestos, you know. Oh, look at them. They're on fire. Here's some worry. <laughs> Here's some agitation. Try to put that fire out. Here's spiritual laziness. You don't have to do it today. Here's me first. Here's I'm mad at him. <laughs> See, that's his fire stoppers. Because he's, what the devil's really after is just stopping you from being on fire for God because that's a threat to him. That's a threat to him. But the fire of God comes from devotion to Jesus, from having experienced the life-changing power of the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. I, I went to church for nine months before I was born, every Sunday. <laughs> and after that, for years, I had perfect attendance in the Episcopal Church so long it almost hurt my neck. <laughs> but I didn't know them. They gave me what they had, you know. You can't give what you don't have. They taught me some things. Learned about the Trinity. Came to appreciate communion, Holy Communion. But I never met Jesus there. And when I met him and I gave my life to him, my older brother challenged me. Because my parents were evangelistic. Here, Dan, I'm going to slide Nikki Cruz's book under your door. <laughs> you know, run, baby, run. David Wilkerson's The Cross and the Switchblade, you know. Some of you know what I'm talking about. They'd slide all these books. And I used to say, what kind of kid do they think I am? You know, <laughs> Mickey Cruz covered with a garbage can, swinging a bat with a spike in it, you know, and these riots and things. I'm like, man, what do they think I'm into? You know, my parents. 
But one day my brother challenged me. Dan, you're running from him. Just stop. And I prayed, asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins. He came into my life, and, and that relationship with him became the predominant thing in my life from that time until now. I wouldn't trade Jesus for anything. When I was in Bible college, by the way, I have six pages of notes, and I haven't even... But when I was in Bible college, a singer from South Korea came through. He had just gotten saved. In South Korea, he was a household name, a pop singer. And he just came, he, he'd been saved, and he was traveling with the missionary, Assemblies of God missionary that led him to the Lord. And he got up in front of our student body at Elam Bible Institute, and he began to sing, just him and his guitar, very simply. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Well, he had had riches untold. He had had silver and gold. He had success. He had popularity. He had adoring fans. And when he sang this, I'd rather have Jesus. It's just like this hand just seemed to just come upon. No one wanted to breathe. We were just like, oh. the presence of God, because what was coming through him was so pure. He gave all that up. Because he knew in his life he couldn't do both. Just him. He couldn't do both. And the purity of that fire, I remember to this day, the purity of that fire and the awesome presence of God that came through that man. I have no idea what happened to him after that. I've never seen him or heard of him since. But as a Bible college student, he left his mark on me. We gotta let the fire burn. Hi, this is Pastor Dan Kramer. I just wanted to thank you for taking part in our video of our worship service here today. We'd love to have you join us. We have parking on street, basically anywhere around the church, but we also have a parking shuttle that goes from our church, which is 2019 Brownsville Road, to a parking lot right next to Vern's Electric, which is a block and a half away, 1917 Brownsville Road. So there are clearly marked with signs. So if you go past the church towards Pittsburgh, the church is on the right, block and a half away, you'll see Vern's Electric turn into the parking lot right off of Brownsville Road. The building has a mural on it, so it's kind of hard to mistake where the parking lot is. And uh, let our people in our parking shuttle bring you here from 10 till till 10 after 10, and then take you back there. So that's how we work with parking here, because we don't have a parking lot at our facility. But we have a wonderful group of people and a rich presence of the Lord in our midst, and we'd love to have you join us. And that's how you can park. Thanks and God bless. Bye-bye. Well, hello, everybody. Just want to thank you for taking time to watch our video here today. We have a wonderful group of people who enjoy the presence of the Lord and, and love being together. Come into the presence of the Lord, 10 o'clock in the morning each Sunday. It's been a really difficult time in our nation, but God tells us in his word that he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And when we meet together with each other in a clean environment that has been sanitized, we worship him and we find him present. And that table that he prepares 
when people meet together in Jesus' name is so good. So I just want to encourage you, come and visit us. We have children's programming at our 10 o'clock service each week and nursery. But God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy the blessing and the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.